Hey, welcome to the Elk Shape YouTube channel. Today, I wanna break down how to shoot longer distances, which means how to get a legitimate sight tape. And I wanna tell you guys how to get the exact sight tape so that you're spot on and precise. Come along, we're gonna talk about shooting longer distances for practice, as well as getting that sight tape super doped. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is your bow sight selection. So forgive me, I haven't tried all the brands out there. If you've been checking out our channel for a while, you understand I shoot a lot of times Black Gold, Spot Hog, and I kind of bounce back and forth between the two. I don't really have a particular favorite. I'm just looking for something that's very bulletproof and something that has a lot of adjustment, i.e. first axis, micro, ideally, second axis that's easy, third axis that's reasonable, and so that I can get all that kind of figured out. From there, I like a slider. I want to be able to slide out, but it also depends on what is your bow sight intended for? Are you just a target archer or are you a whitetail hunter or are you like me where you hunt primarily elk but you end up hunting antelope pronghorn, bears in the spring, you'll even might be convinced to go on a turkey hunt, um, mule deer, anything and everything. And I generally lean towards a setup that kind of encompasses all species and that's what I stick with. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to sights is make sure that you have probably something like two inch housing so you have enough room, especially if you're running multiple pins, you need all the room you can inside that housing. Uh, when it comes to Black Gold and Spot Hog, uh, they include sight tapes with them and I'll talk a little bit about how to sight each one in and we've made other videos in the past but you're going to get a booklet of tapes and they're usually from Archer's Advantage which we'll also talk about. but. They're out to 100. And unless you get the Spot Hog, um, which comes with, I think the John Dudley edition has an extended range sight tape. So a lot of times they'll go from 20 down to 125 yards, which is more likely what some of you are interested in checking out. So it depends on if you're going to get the standard sight tapes. And if you are, you might want to get the long range ones. If you're interested in shooting past 100 and ultimately, Archer's Advantage, which is a software program we'll talk about here in a second, which will make you your own custom sight tapes. Think about where you mount your bow on the riser of the bow. So a lot of guys like to run really long dovetails and get that sight further out, which is going to be more accurate. And if you get a sight tape, you'll have a longer sight tape. So you'll have more precision on individual specific yardages. But I like to have mine pretty close to everything compressed. I'm a short draw length, 27. And depending on the axle to axle of the bow, and the string angle, I like my sight fairly close to the riser. I want compression. Um, it will not, uh, if you torque the bow at all, which maybe some do, I know I do from time to time, it doesn't expose it as much as if your sight's kicked out further. And plus I don't like a dovetail because I just feel like a lot of times it could come loose in the field. And so, I mean, there's ways to mitigate that with the silver Sharpie, but ultimately I like uh, generally a fixed, closer distance compressed for mine and you do you ultimately um, but once you've figured out your site if you're doing multiple pins a lot of folks do five pin sliders so they have their fixed 20 30 40 50 anything beyond 50 they will slide their sight tape down to that said distance and you can there are ways to make it to where you can have your five fixed pin and still dial in exact yardages from 50 and under like a 34 yard shot you could slide to 34 if you wanted to do that sure Certainly, I've experimented with all five, four, and three pin sliders. I kind of like a three or four pin. I like, for my draw length, I like to have that 20, that 30, that 40, then slide, or a 50 and slide. And I generally don't worry about having exact distances, 50 and under, or 40 and under. I'll pin gap where you can pick a specific, you know, spot on the animal. If, say, it's a 35 yard shot, and you can say, okay, I want my 30 and 40. Um, here and I want half the distance between the two and that's what I'm going to focus on and you blur out the pins and you focus on that spot and you pin gap. That's a thing. Uh, you do you. Um, some folks want to run a single pin for everything. Spot Hog makes the double pin post and now they have a triple pin post. So it's still a single post but you got one, two, and three 
that's cool too. I have that set up. I'll show you guys that as well. But for me, when it comes down to everything, it's about elk hunting. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone full draw on a bull under 20 yards. Maybe he spooked or saw, spins out, runs 20, 30 yards out and stops. And I'm at full draw. I don't have time to let down, get his exact range, move a pin or whatever. And so I'm going to have to actually estimate yardage and I'm going to say, okay, I think he's at 37. I'm going to aim 40 and I'm going to aim low on his heart. Boom. And it's all going to happen in a moment's notice. So I probably promote, or at least what I do is do fixed pins for elk. And then I try to keep the same setup for all the species. So currently on my V331, I have three pin slider, Montana black gold, and I need to get that sight tape extended out right now. I think I'm pretty close with hundred yards, but um, that's the sight tape that comes with black gold. And I want to shoot maybe longer distances. Maybe I want to take that to tack or total archery challenge and shoot a 101 yard mountain goat or 111 yard shot to try to win a truck. So I'm going to tinker and show you guys right now how to make sure first off, how far can you shoot with your current setup? And then maybe a couple tricks to extend that distance. If you're interested, uh, I also have a single pin black gold on my V327. And that is kind of my whitetail uh, tree stand ground blind setup. And that's why I have a single pin. I'm going to have known distances. I'm going to have an exact set. And I might take that to tack because it is kind of nice to have just one pin to look at when you're shooting total archery challenge or a 3D tournament. It's super nice. It really is. And so that I have a couple different arrows I'm going to go through right now that I've made. And I'll tell you which ones and where they're going to come in. Speaking of arrows, we got to talk about arrows. So if you are the kind of person that wants to do like a total archery challenge and build arrows that are super light just for that, I get it. That's, that's totally cool. I personally want to do total archery challenge to get me ready for hunting. So I'm going to be as close to a real hunting setup from bow to arrows. I'm not going to drop poundage. Uh, I'm not going to mess with let off. I'm not going to make some super lightweight arrows just for total archery challenge uh, or put on specific veins that have less drag. I'm going to figure out um, the lightest I can go, but still hunt with. And that's just what I do. The other thing about your bow is your bow needs to obviously, before you try to sight in your tape and make sure that you have the exact sight tape and get precision is make sure your bow's tuned. Like you're shooting bullet holes, like you're close to the manufacturer's specs. Uh, obviously it's gotta be in time where your draw stops hit at the same time. Your draw length is something you can't change. Uh, you can increase your poundage, but I do want to say like, if you want to crank your poundage to 80, 85 pounds or whatever, you got to shoot a stiffer arrow to do that. Let's just, it just is what it is. And if you have a stiffer arrow, then you need, that's like a stiffer spine, then you're going to have more GPI grains per inch. And if you have more GPI, you're going to have more drop. So you kind of have to balance all this out. It's just stuff for you to think about. So remember you increase your poundage, you have to increase your stiffness, you're going to increase your weight, you're going to increase your drop. So if you're building a setup that you kind of want to shoot out past hundred yards, it's going to be tough depending on your draw length and poundage to be over 600 grains total setup. So I personally like to be in that 450 to 500. That's my personal sweet spot, but you figure out what, what's going to work best for you. When you're sighting in your tape, um, we need to talk about a couple things. First off, Archer's Advantage software, it's probably like 40 bucks, and that is the one true fire way where you can print your own sight tapes at home. They're gonna ask you a ton of information from how long your arrow is cut from the, the throat of the knock all the way down to the end, what's your point weight, what's your insert weight, how many veins, what's your veins weight, how long are your veins, distance from the peep down to the arrow, the distance from the arrow to, I mean, they're gonna wanna know all this information and they're gonna try to spit out sight tapes that are close. And that's all they're gonna do is get you close. It's your job to go and verify. If you don't have Archer's Advantage and you have the sight tapes that are included with your sight, 
Just know that, yeah, you can shoot through a chrono, figure out your feet per second. Like for me, say I grab a 280 feet per second tape, that's close, I grab that. I still have to go out and verify, and it's just a starting point. Chances are it's not gonna be perfect, and I know that, and you need to know that. So when I go to get my sight tape set up, um, let's just say I'm working from scratch. I wanna get my, my single pin or my three pins all perfect. So I'll start with 10 yard increments. And I'm assuming you've already probably done some sort of walk back tune already to figure out everything's, that that arrow's coming out perfectly square, perfect bullet. That's, I'm assuming all that. So if you're not there, you're going to be gnashing your teeth trying to figure all this out. So stop, make sure everything's super perfect. And if you don't know how to do that, watch more videos, go to a pro shop, get help, get mentored. And then do what I do is just go out and, and do 10 yard increments, get your 20, get your 30, get your 40, inspect what you expect, that they're all perfect, and then you can work your way backwards. And I usually go 10 yard increments, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Pie plates, I think you don't move back until you can get a consistent group hitting like a, a pie plate. And if your ability does not allow you to shoot past 60, you can't group on a, a pie plate, say with five or six arrows, then you don't need a sight tape to go out to 100. So you gotta be real honest with yourself and just have a goal, keep working on your execution um, and keep tinkering, ABT. I think when you're sighting in a sight tape, the further out you can get confirmation, the better. So a lot of times Spot Hog will give you a, um, a sight in tape that's get your 20, get your 60. Once you get those two, look at the number, it provides you a number, and then you go grab that sight tape. I personally think that's gonna get you close, but it's not gonna be exact. I know it's not, and you could get frustrated. So uh, if I was starting from scratch, I would want to again work all the distances in 10 yard increments and making sure that I'm hitting pie plates and that I'm grouping really well. Once I finally selected a sight tape and I feel like I'm super close, I'm gonna go and shoot that sight tape for five, maybe 10 different sessions and just have a pen in my pocket. And if for some reason, my I noticed that my sight tape says 80, but really it's more like 79, I'm gonna make a note on that and see if I can constantly figure out the exact sight tape for that. And it's just a process that it takes time, tinkering, confirming, make sure you're shooting on days where it's not super windy or you know your bow could be moving all over the place. Like you need pretty good conditions. Um, maybe it's in the evening, check your lighting. It's not too bright, it's not too dark and that you know you know that this is just it's you're never actually at the best perfect sight tape until you are let me quickly go through some arrows i get so many messages and uh, emails about arrows and they always want to know what am i tinkering I'm, I'm trying to put it out here for you guys so right now this is an axis five millimeter match grade i like match grades 0 0.001 so it's what does that mean it's it's very expensive is what it means it's very accurate it's uh not 0 0.006 or whatever uh i would hunt with this and uh front of center on this one i believe is right around 14 percent and i just use a calculator go online and they'll ask you a couple distances you got to find the balance point of the arrow so you'll make a mark you'll measure that You'll put all your stats in, you'll get your FOC. I'm a 13 to 15% kind of guy for me. Uh, some people say don't even worry about front and center. And then some people tell you gotta be plus 20%. Everyone's got an opinion. Um, there's some good studies out there from Ed Ashby. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube called Ranch Ferry. Um, I'm just a guy on YouTube who hunts elk, kills elk with this. So I can only tell you from my experience what I've experienced. And so used to shoot full metal jackets for, for years. When I switched to Matthews, Matthews bows weren't as fast as what I was using, so I wanna to go to a little bit of a lighter setup, and I went with this. So um, we usually cut this arrow just like 25 and a half inches, sometimes 26 inches, depending on you know the bow. So this one's at 26 inches. You can see that I have a 100 grain fill point up here, and then I have an iron wheel 10 grain collar. And so I have 75 grain insert, I can, do this little deal right here. And that'll that's fine. This does add a little bit more weight up front so it bolsters my front to center without changing the length of the arrow. 
Uh, so 75 grains, 100 grains, that's 175. You add this collar on, we're 185 up front. It adds a little bit of structural integrity. On the back end, I have these Max Stealths. I have shot Max Hunters, and I have found that longer distances, these seem to group better. They also group a little lower, so if you're worried about drop, you might wanna try Max Hunters. Uh, I like the Max Stealths because even though my arrows maybe drop a little lower at longer distances, they group significantly tighter, which is also why I only sell Max Stealth at elkshape.com because that's just what I use. Helical, I use a Max Helical from Arizona Easy Fletch. Um, I've reached out to them and let them know. I, I encourage a lot of people to get theirs because it's fast. You can put three veins on really quick. I do use, um, we got awesome arrow build videos. Check them out. On the back end, where legal, I'll use a Nocturnal. This is heavier. This is like 20 grains-ish versus an x knock is going to be from Easton going to weigh 9 grains. So you're actually adding them at least 10 grains by using the lighted knock. But I'm okay with that and I don't use a wrap. So this is what I've killed most of my animals with minus the collar. I'm going to probably add a collar to this. This will be my setup for the V331. And so adding the 10 grains, I need to... Put a new sight tape on so i'm going to have to do a new sight tape with the v331 this is an arrow that i built that i was i only did 12 because i wasn't sure if it was going to be something i'd use long term this is an axis five millimeter 300 spine so the previous arrow was 340 this is a 300 so stiffer weighs more gpi grains per inch no lighted knock so this is kind of more of like an Idaho, because that's the only state that doesn't allow lighted knocks, Idaho setup. This is a uh, max helical to the left, because that's just what I prefer. And that's kind of what I've shot these all blank out of my bow. And my bow likes to shoot arrows to the left for the most part, like 10 out of 12 shots, brand new dozen arrows. So you can clock your own arrows. We can do a whole video on that. Comment below if you want us to do that. On this one, I have 75 grain insert hidden insert from Iron Wheel Outfitters. And then I have their 25 grain collar. And that is, um, this is not titanium. This is actually steel. So it's a little bit, a little bit tougher, but both are pretty tough. And then this is 125 grain fill point. So 125 plus 25 plus 75. So 225 up front, the FOC on this thing is like 15 and a half percent. Yeah, you can see it's, it's legit. Total weight, 485. Total weight, 465. So 20 grain difference. If I were hunting in Idaho, <clears throat> you can see it's a, this arrow is a little bit longer. And anytime you make your arrows longer, you're decreasing your front of center. Anytime you're putting weight on the back end of your arrow, you're decreasing your front of center. Things to just, I mean, you, you can do whatever you want, but just things to consider. And lastly, this little guy, this is the shortest I've ever cut an arrow. It's, uh, I think it's just under 25 inches and my draw lane's 27. About a quarter inch is all I got from where I'm making sure that I actually, am, the shaft is still on the rest as it rises up, but only maybe a quarter inch sticks out. And that's just in case a bow got spongy, you never want your arrow to come back beyond the rest, right? So um, couldn't use a collar on this setup. Uh, a collar would end up contacting the rest. So just note that. So what we have here is 75 grains up front, 100 grain tip. Uh, the total arrow weight here is 445. And the front of center was 14.8%. Well, I think it was. There we go. So this, this arrow is the lightest of the three and it only fits my V327. And uh, my V327 is a single pin. So if I were getting super serious about doing a 3D tournament, I'd probably shoot this, which would be the lightest arrow. It had the least amount of trajectory, which gives you forgiveness, less arc, less drop, in case you were off or made a bad shot, the most speed, the flattest trajectory, um, and I could still hunt with it. So this is a brand new arrow. I'm gonna have to start over and sight this one in. So we're gonna go outside, get some pie plates, shoot some arrows and show you what it's all about. I hope that helps you guys figure out some of the nuance behind shooting extended distances and getting the precise 
sight tape and getting it all dope for you. It's just the process, it's a journey. ABT, if you guys dig what we do, tap that bell to be notified when we drop awesome content. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more of this kind of content and give it a thumbs up. Appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one.